Ken Bostrom Ministries. Beginning January 2018, Ken Bostrom Ministries engaged in a whole new assignment by entering the airwaves of the world. Don't miss Ken and Mary Bostrom Ministries Live. Welcome back to another uh, program with United in His Purpose Ministries, where we reach a lost, teach a found, and preach a word that we would all become united in His purpose. It's God's will for all mankind to be saved. So no matter where you are, if you're in, the, in this country, another country, another language, God's will is for you to be born again, come into the kingdom of God, and you are going to enter into an amazing place called the kingdom of God. You know, uh, on the last program, on the first program, this is the second program of the kingdom of God. In the first program, I talked about the heir of the kingdom now theology, uh, doctrine, which had, it was in the 70s, and it, and it messed up everything, er, all the teaching about the kingdom of God and discipleship. And so churches were afraid to teach about the kingdom of God. But then there was a man called Miles Monroe from the Bahamas that came out who was one of the most anointed preachers I have ever heard about teaching about the kingdom of God. His books are so incredible. Uh, you, would, you would really benefit. He is in heaven now, but YouTube continues to carry Miles Monroe, just like he's been here all, all the time. And so you can go on to YouTube, uh, look for Miles, M-Y-L-E-S, Monroe, and uh, just find out some more. He's, he's probably the best teacher ever in the kingdom of God. And so I know I can't, I can't even come close to him, but I am trying to bring forth the kingdom, what a kingdom is, a king's domain where he has authority. It, you know, there are boundaries for everything. And you know what the boundaries are for God? The universe. Everything God is eternally the king of the universe. I love how, uh, you know, on, on candlelighting sing, um, um, let's see, I was trying to think if I could do it in Hebrew without blessing it up, but blessed are you, O, o a king of the universe, king of the universe. And that's what they call him. He is king of the universe. Um, and so what we're going to be going on to now is when God gave dominion of the earth, not the universe, not the heavens, man does not have dominion over the Mars or the moon. They don't have dominion. Man has been given dominion on this earth. So let's go back to uh, when, when we were last time, it says here, Genesis 1:27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and he, female, he created them. And, uh, in, and then we, in Genesis 2, 7, and the Lord formed man is fashioned like a potter in a clay of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life a man became a living soul man became actually in hebrew it reads man became a speaking spirit do you know this is how artificial res resuscitation began when when uh someone was reading this and they thought I wonder if we can breathe into another person and bring them back to life. And that is how God's example of breathing into man. Up to that point, man was only dust of the ground. He was formed like a vessel, like a, like a vessel, like a potter with a clay. He would form something, a, a, a person to hold something. And that body was to, it was to be the earth suit for the spirit and soul. We are a spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and we live in this body. When we die, 
this body will stay here on earth. It'll go back to the dust. It'll go back to dirt. But our spirit and our soul are either going to go to heaven or hell eternally. And the choice is ours to make. Make a choice for heaven as fast as you can. Because there, those are your only two options. You're either going to choose Jesus Christ or you're going to choose hell. The choice is yours today. And so God, when God created earth, he created man in his image and, in the, and with the assignment. That was the assignment. If somebody gives you an assignment, you better do it. If the teacher gives you an assignment, you better do it. If you are given a responsibility from someone higher up, you, you know what? You are responsible for that assignment to rule and have dominion on the earth. Now man had a working relationship with God. Man was never given authority to rule over man. Adam committed high treason by giving the authority over to Satan. A lot of people think that Eve was the one that sinned. God never spoke to Eve. God spoke to Adam. Adam knew better. When Eve, sin when Eve was tricked, she was tricked because she hadn't heard firsthand from, the de from, from God like Adam was. Adam heard from God, do not eat of that tree. And that when the devil came, sliding and sneaky he came, when he came, he tricked her. And, and Adam was taken in and, God, and Adam had to make a choice between Eve or God. And he did, and he chose Eve. Adam committed high treason because at that time, he gave dominion and authority over to Satan. Once God, the king, God, made it a law, it could not be reversed, even by himself. You know, high treason is the only crime that, that demands a death penalty. And at that point, Adam began to die. You know, he probably could have lived eternally. The, the higher the responsibility and trust, the higher the penalty. Adam was dis disconnected from heaven. He was disconnected from heaven. He fell, into re uh, fell from revelation. Now, he did not have the revelation. He couldn't walk and talk with God and, and, and things like that anymore. A spiritual knowledge, revelation. He fell down to information, relying on the sense realm, what he could see, what he could taste, what he could feel. So he fell from revelation down to information, and that's how he had had to live in the sense realm. When the spirit, uh, when, without the spirit of God, Adam no longer knew the will and mind of God and could no longer work with God. He lost responsibility. He lost position. He, he became self-conscious. He became fearful and intimidated by authority. He no longer had dominion over nature. Now he had d human accountability. He no longer had that dominion. Immediately, uh, he was kicked out of the garden. Uh, angels were posted at, at the gate of the garden, could no longer get in, and, and he had to work for everything. He, he no longer spoke, and then the animals had their names. He, he, he never had dominion. He never had that authority anymore. And that's why Jesus is called the second Adam. Because what the first Adam lost, Jesus bought back. Amen? Now, here, here preach in the kingdom. Uh, Matthew 3, 1. Now, I love the book of Matthew. Matthew was written basically to the Jewish people. A lot of things in, in the book of Matthew, when he's talking about Jewish things, he doesn't explain because it was written to La, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Jewish people. And Matthew was, uh, they called him Levi, which is a, a Jewish name. In the days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then in Matthew 4, 17, 
It says, and from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus went about Galilee teaching, number one, teaching, then preaching at the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. You know, he, he had to teach. He had to change your mind. The interesting thing about repent, I'm not sure if I have it, it further on here. Uh, if I do a double, I would do a double. But both of them had the message of repentance. And when we think of repentance, we think, oh, just go down to the altar and just, just cry and cry and cry, and I'm sorry I did that, and I'm sorry I said this, and I, I, I'm sorry I lied, and I'm sorry I t stole, and, you know, I, I'm sorry about, you know, and you can do that every single day. That's not repentance. Repentance is changing your mind. There is, a, 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 there is when you change your mind, a, there is a, a place where you, like, realize that was wrong, Jesus, you're the right way. You are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And so when you realize that, a lot of times you do cry. And, and you do have tears of when you change your mind, you are so sorry that you went the other way. So in Greek, it's metameo, meta, uh, metanoio, metanoio, to think differently, to change one's mind for the better, to hardly amend with abhorrence of one's past sin. In uh, the Hebrew, it's nashem, and it means to be sorry, console oneself, regret, or be moved to pity. And that's probably where most people get uh, that word, you know, that the, the crying. Hebrew means to shuv. Uh, it, means, it means shuv. It means to return, to turn back, to come and go back. And so if you have turned away from God, then you need to shuv. You need to return back to the Lord. And um, if you don't radically change the way you think, and see, every time Jesus would teach, he's radically teaching them how the right way to do it. Because, you know, they had, they had been in Babylon at, and for 70 years, and then their ancestors came out, and they just were on survival mode. And then the Romans, Maccabees, came, you know, the, uh, Alexander the Great came and changed everything to Greek, and then the Romans came to rule. It was a mess. Most of the people did not know. All they, all they knew was rules. You have to do this. You have to do this. You can't do this. You can't do that. And Jesus came teaching them how the kingdom of God worked. Not, it's, and kingdom of God is not made with rules and regulations and you have to do this and you can't do this and, you know, all those kind of things. And um, if you don't radically change the way you think, you will never change and you will never experience miracles, signs, and wonders that are associated with the kingdom of God. Preaching at, with the kingdom of God preaching, you will reason everything away. So if, if somebody was just preaching, 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 and, and what preaching does is it motivates you, it kind of excites you, and it just, yeah, yeah, it fires you up and stuff. But a teacher is changing your mind, is changing your thinking. That's what I'm trying to do right now with teaching on the kingdom of God. I am trying to teach you uh, the, the way that G, uh, the kingdom of God works and line upon line is how we're, how we're going to go about it. Romans 12, 2 in the New Living Testament says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That's repentance. Then you will know what God wants you to do. And you will know how good and pleasing and perfect his will really is. Isaiah 55, 8 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways, saith the Lord. We have to know his thoughts and his ways. I like uh, Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. 
Well, if you look in the Amplified, it says, uh, Amplified Bible, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then in, it, it, then in, in brackets it says, His way of doing and being right. You know, there is a way that right, seems right unto man, but it leads to destruction. But God's ways are awesome. Philippians 2.5, Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Jesus had the mind of God all the time. He was doing the will of God. He says, I, I, I say nothing unless I hear what my Father says. It's, you know, God tells them what to do. And the kingdom of God is at hand. What does that mean? Message Bible says, Then Isaiah prophesied sermon came to life in Galilee. Uh, the moment Jesus started preaching, he picked up where John left off. Change your life. God's kingdom is here. <laughs> it's an interesting way to put it. Amplified Bible says, From that time Jesus began to preach, crying out, Repent! Change your mind for the better. Here we go again. Change your mind for the better. Hardly amend your ways with abhorrence of your past sins. So changing your mind, you will have regret the way you used to be. Uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the New Living Testament says, uh, From then on, Jesus began to preach, Repent for your sin, from your sins and turn to God. For the kingdom of heaven is near. Uh, Luke 17, 21. It says the kingdom of God is within us. The kingdom of God is within us. Back then, when Jesus was preaching in the Gospels, the kingdom of God was not in them because they were not born again. And, but Luke is saying what is going to be happening Neither sh shall, they say, shall is future. Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. New Living Testament says you won't be able to say, here it is and it's over here. For the kingdom of God is among you or within you. Uh, the New American Standard Bible says, nor will they say, look, here it is or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. I, li I think the Amplified Bible puts it best. Nor people say, look, here it is, or see, it is there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you, in your hearts, and among you, surrounding you. We can see God's hand working in our hearts. We can feel him, you know, when we pick up the Bible. We can hear him instructing us. We can hear what the Master is instructing us about our day or about an assignment, or uh, teaching us something new. But we can also see the kingdom of God working around us with signs and wonders and miracles and answered prayers. So I, like, I think the Amplified Version says it best. It is within you, in your heart, when you're born again. And it will be among you. You're going to see it all over. You're, you're to bring the kingdom of God into the area where he has planted you. You were supposed to bloom where you were planted. The kingdom of God, now this is, this is interesting because what is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world? Now a lot of people have said they're exactly the same thing, but I disagree. Because when you look at the parables, they'll say the kingdom of heaven is like this and the kingdom of God is like this. And they're giving, showing you difference of the two. Is, and, and, and that is in Matthew. When you look at the parables in Matthew, uh, I'll be teaching about the different parables, uh, and not in this, in this episode, but in the episodes to come. And you're going to see the kingdom of God is like this, especially the, 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 the uh, treasure and the pearl. The treasure hid in the field or the pearl. And you're going to see one of them is the Jews and one of them is the church. We're going to come to that. The kingdom of God is God's domain. He is a king. In the Old Testament, he is king. When we come to the New Testament, all authority is given to Jesus, and Jesus is the king of kings. Does that mean he's over God? He's sitting, sitting at the right hand of God. He is ruling from on high. And his ecclesia his called out ones that are called to govern and rule upon this earth um, are getting their 
uh, their information and their assignments from King Jesus, who is seated on the throne at the right hand of God. So it is God's domain. But when we come to the kingdom of heaven, this is the way I was taught by Bob Yandian and my former pastor, Pastor Robert Doughty, who is my spiritual father. Uh, I was taught that this is the way, and the Dakes Bible actually backs it up. It's a time period of the kingdom of God that is between Jesus leaving the earth in Acts chapter 1 and to his return at the end of the tribulation when he comes to rule for the thousand year reign. And so there's a time period that nobody knew about. It was called the church, the church age. It is a dis dispensation, dispensation uh, ascension. And it's, um, I believe it's a two day period, which is 2000 years. I believe our time is just about up. And the parables, when they're talking about the kingdom of heaven, they're talking about the kingdom of God, yes, but it is that specified time period how the church is actually going to be the ones responsible. The church is going to be the ones that are held accountable. The church are the ones that have been given power and authority. That power and authority is not given to animals. It's not given to Satan. It is specifically all power and authority was given to Jesus. And let me find that in, in Mark. I have so many books up here with me because it's, well, I could, I could have brought a lot more. That's all I can say. But this one's ones I'm looking at today, the end of Mark. Again, I wasn't ready for this, <laughs> but I know where to find it. Here's a great commission. Oh, no, it's the end of Matthew. End of Matthew. Okay. You're going to say, I wish Mary was prepared. Yeah, me too. I, I wish I was perfect in a lot of different ways. <laughs> and um, Matthew 28, 17. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. And basically he says, I'm going to give it to you, and all you go there for. And make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. The end of the age. Um, and so uh, Dake's Bible, this is what Dake's Bible says about the kingdom of heaven from uh, Matthew 4.17 in his Dake's Notes. Uh, kingdom of heaven headed by Jesus Christ for the purpose of reestablishing the kingdom of God over the rebellious part of God's realm. And so Jesus is the head and we are the body. He is, he, we are the body of Christ. He is the head. Our power and authority come from him. Our assignments to rule and reign come from him. Our given assignments, whether you're called to be a teacher, preacher, uh, Bible study teacher, missionary, uh, a, a street worker, feeding the homeless, uh, giving, you know, whether you're, you're called to be uh, financial, to be support ministries, every one of us has got a part. And our part is, is we are going to be responsible to Jesus Christ, who is the head of the body, all authority has been given unto him. Now we go in his authority, in his name, in his power of attorney. And he even says that if you need anything, you just ask the Father in my name, and he's going to do it. And you know, miracles, 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 miracles. I mean, if you want, if you want to be held to the kingdom of this earth, you just go right ahead. But you are not going to see signs and wonders and miracles that happen in the kingdom of God if you are living like this world. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. This is a, a, a world that is, that is uh, you are held captive by your sense realm. Your finances are held captive by interest rates that are dominated by the world system. 
you're not going to see the 30, 60, and 100 fold that can happen in the kingdom of God. The choice is yours today. You get to choose. Choose you this day who you will serve. Uh, are you are you going to choose God or are you going to choose to act like the world? You know, in God, it isn't a, just a system of rules. You have to do this and you can't do this. No, it's not all that. that God is love. And yes, there are rules. God's way of doing and being right. And But you know what? It's for the good. Not once have I ever regretted giving my life to the Lord. Not once. I was in such an incredible depression in my life when I was 32 years old. I had been in church all my life. I was involved in Christian women's at the time, sitting in the front row of a Baptist church with my Bible, you know, and, and I, I was involved in Bible study, prayer every day. I read, but more, people thought I was one of the most Christian people that they knew. And yet I was so depressed. I was so depressed. It was like I was caught in the darkness. And in July 4th, 1982, my sister-in-law, who had just received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, she, everybody had gone to bed. We were having an outing, and everybody had gone to bed. And she says, Mary, you are in such a depressed area. She says, I don't understand it. And she says, do you mind if I stand behind you and pray in, in my prayer language and see if the Lord tells me anything? So she stood behind me, and she prayed, and she prayed, and prayed in her, in her prayer language. And she finally says, Mary, the only thing I can get, keep getting is you are supposed to say Jesus is Lord. And I said, okay, Satan is Lord. I could not believe I said that Satan was Lord. And she says, I command you to say Jesus is Lord. I couldn't say it. She was, she was over me praying in the Holy Ghost. And, and um, there's a scripture for that, and, and i don't running out of time here. But she says, would you like Jesus, be, Jesus to be your Lord? And I said, yes. And she says, then repeat after me. I renounce anywhere, any place I have given Satan in my life. I forbid him any more rule or reign in my life. I repent for being, I, I, uh, giving him any authority in my life. And right now, I ask Jesus to come into my life. Be my Lord, be my Savior, be my King, be my Redeemer. And, you know, instantly I was born again. Instantly all that darkness left. Instantly I was flooded, flooded with light and love. And I knew Fa Father God as, I mean, Jesus, it's like Jesus stepped aside and introduced me to my Father. Do that today. God bless you. Bye-bye.